in this video, I'll go over everything you need to know regarding the strategies on the tracks in the Leaf Cup. Track picking, the item sets, the power item spots, the bomb spots, and the shock spots. Also, for those of you who don't know, I'll be uploading my 1,000 subscriber special this Wednesday. I hope you're looking forward to that because it's going to be a doozy, I can tell you that much. But without further ado, let's start giving her, bud. Just before getting started, if you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. It's free. It helps me out a lot, and you can always change your mind. Starting things off, we got Wario Stadium, and I think it goes without saying that this is the most iconic bounce. Wait, 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 wait. Who the hell wrote this? Well, what's going on here? <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. I don't think it's a surprise that this track is classified as a running track, but to be honest, this track really isn't as good of a front runner as people give it credit for, at least with mass top spots. I just feel like it's rather easy to break into the front quickly if your team has most of the middle or lesser middle spots, but maybe that's just me. In 6v6, I suggest picking this when your team has most top spots. I'd say something like top three and a couple middle spots. This track is a solid one to run, don't get me wrong, but I think it can be really easy to lose your top spots in some scenarios. In Mogi, this is a solid track to pick when starting in first. This is because you can take the four coins and still maintain your position in first or eventually take it back if someone shroomed up or second place stayed tight. The point is, this is a solid track to pick for first. Either way, Wario Stadium. While this is a great runner, I personally think it's an overrated one. As you would expect, there are three item sets on this track. The first one is right after the race begins, five single boxes. You need to be careful on lap one though, as people could go ham with a green, or someone could pull triple bananas right in the middle of the pack. At the second set, there are four single boxes with a double box in the very middle. This is a very appealing double box and can be pretty difficult to nab on occasion, especially because you're approaching it after a boost ramp. And at the last set, you have four single boxes with two double boxes next to the very left and right boxes. While there are two doubles rather than one, you also can't go back for a box if you miss it, so you've got to be careful here. Remember, one item is better than no item, especially after this set. Your cue to golden up is after the boost from the final ramp runs out. You can drive on the side of the ramps, and you can shroom in the off-road afterwards as well. This golden strat isn't great, but it is something. I think the star strat is really good on this track despite it not looking too special. Chain your star into the last set and take the ending shortcut. This can be really solid in a lap 3 situation, plus you'll be able to take the ending cut without anything to worry about. And for the bill, you want to use it about midway through the ending shortcut, and it'll drop you off before the first boost ramp. Considering you're using it through the tightest turns on the track, this is a really solid bill strat, and I wish I mentioned it in my bill strats video. You have some pretty lethal bomb spots on this track. The first one is right after the first turn, and it's just barely avoidable. In general, it's a really reliable bomb spot on the tightest section on the track. Your opponents will have to have that god gamer reaction time to even have a chance to avoid this. Now, most people would back their bomb on the anti-gravity section if they have one, but I feel like it's much more efficient backing your bomb right after the anti-gravity ramp. In most cases, your opponents will be landing onto the bomb, and they'll have no way of moving out of the way until it's too late. And you can also back your bomb just before the glider ramp. In most situations, you'll land a hit or two here, as it's really hard to avoid this one. But this is a pretty reliable bomb, especially at the end of the race. Of course, you can make your shocks really good if your team has a bunch of dodges, but in general, this shock spot is only alright. Chaining your shock into the last set can be pretty solid. While you could shock your opponents onto boost panels or potentially right before glider, they won't be able to take the ending cut while you can. Again, this shock spot is nothing too special, and it's very situational whether it is a great shock spot or not. Either way, that's the way she goes on Wario Stadium, so let's break down the strats on Sherbet Land. Sherbert Land is a very uncommon track, so it's a little difficult to classify what this track is. I don't think catching up is out of the question, but you don't have a ton of big time shortcuts to help you out. Overall, I'd say this is a balanced track. This track kind of reminds me of Electrodrome with how there can be a few drafts at the beginning, and there's a decent sized shortcut to push to the front, being in the wide snow section. In 6v6, I suggest picking this when your team has a bunch of middle spots. Hell, this could even work for mass top spots, but I think nailing the shrooms at the beginning, especially on an off-road track, would help a lot. In Mogi, it really doesn't matter, just pick the track if you like it. I guess it's safe to say that in regards to Mogi, you should mainly focus on strategic track picking when starting in first, otherwise just pick what you want. So I think moving forward, I'll only mention what general spots you should pick said track for in 6v6, but I will briefly mention Mogi's if it's a runnable track. But yeah, Sherbert Land is a balanced track in my eyes. 
you have three item sets on this track. Wow! The first set is a pretty wide one, with there being six single boxes. Nothing too special here, just be careful in case of some weird item plays to start off the race. The second set is split up by the ice. On the tight side, you have two single boxes, and on the wide side, you have two singles, with a double box in the middle. You have to go pretty wide for this double, so it holds some risk for sure. And at the last set, you have four single boxes, with two double boxes in the middle. It may not look like it when driving tight, but because the set is on the wide snow section, you actually have to go pretty wide to get a double box. While there are two, the risk factor is still there, so make sure you're on your A game if you're in the pack, and you need a double box. Not only does this golden strat look really sick, but it will help you a ton as well. Your cue to begin goldening is as you touch or pass the second set. You'll be able to take both snow cuts and smoothly finish goldening before the last set. It's pretty awesome! The star strat is also used in the same spot, so it's pretty cool. Change your star into the second set, and after that, it's the golden strat, but without the golden. You are using a star on a traction-based track, though, so that's really good alone. Overall, this is a very solid star strat. And the bill strat is nothing to go crazy over. Make sure you're on the right at the beginning of the split path and activate your bill. If you use it on the left, it'll be way too slow to be worth it. And if you use it on the bottom path, you'll barely skip the first set. This bill strat has the least amount of flaws, I suppose, but it still isn't the greatest. Sherbert Land really isn't the greatest track to precisely back bombs on others because it's generally really wide. But for what it's worth, back your bomb right after the turn before the second set. I suppose this is a decent one, but you do have a lot of space where you can possibly avoid it. You can also back a bomb after the first turn on the wide snow section. The general lines here are a lot tighter than you might initially think, so this bomb spot could work, especially on those taking the shortcut. And this bomb spot is pretty meh, but it could maybe help you. Back your bomb right before the ending split path. It could have a decent chance at hitting your opponents if they are taking optimal lines, especially if they plan on taking the bottom path. It's just alright. This is a pretty decent shock spot. Chaining your shock into the second set could help you out a wee bit. There's a good chance that the people in front of you won't be able to take the snow cuts, and if they want a double box at the last set, they'll have to go pretty wide for it. I guess the main point here is that you'll have the most options out of everyone in the room by chaining your shock here, since you can take the two snow cuts, and you might only need one item. It's situational, but it can work really well. Anyway, the job has been done on Sherbet Land. Let's get the show on the road on Music Park. Unfortunately, Music Park is a very laggy track, but it's still a great one, at least in my opinion. The only shortcut on this track doesn't really mean much in the long run, so I think it's safe to say that this is a running track, especially if you're on Scooty, as if you can run, you can really run on this track. In 6v6, I'd suggest picking this when you have the majority of top spots. It's a pretty easy track to run in this scenario, and some of your farther back spots could pull shrooms at the first set and shroom up at the mini grass cut. I guess the main worry with running is that shocks can be pretty deadly, but under the right circumstances, you could say that for any track. And if you're on Scooty, this is another track that you could pick if you're starting in first in a Mogi. So yeah, Music Park is a bit of a wild track online, but it is without a doubt a running track. Guess how many? Yep! three item sets on this track. In all seriousness, I don't mind this at all, but I just find it funny because I always mention how many item sets are on each track, and it's usually three. Anyway, at the first set, you have five single boxes. This is why it's very important to have the majority of top spots, as the other team could easily spam a green at you, then you get bumped off the track. No running for you! At the second set, you have four single boxes with a double box in the middle. This is actually a pretty easy item set to get a double box from, as this is one of the laggiest sections in the game because of the key trick. And the last set, is once again split up. On both sides, you have two single boxes with a double box in the middle. This could make for a chaotic ending to the race, so be careful if you're in the pack or if you don't have a big lead over the people behind you. The golden strat on this track is pretty cool. Release your first super mini turbo the same way you would driving regularly, then begin goldening after the boost runs out. To be safe, you should drive around the keys, but even so, this is a really solid golden strat. The Star Strat is decent in general, but can be really good in a lap 3 situation. Chin your star into the last set, and you'll just barely be able to take the ending shortcut. It isn't much, but again, lap 3 situation, bud! And the Bill Strat is pretty great. Activate your Bill once you're next to the ramp while on the track. It'll drop you off right before the ramp split, which is really solid. If you use it earlier, it'll drop you off on the turn, which is never a good thing. So, use it next to the ramp. You have some solid and reliable bomb spots on Music Park. The first one is at the very start of the turn before the keys, right about here. Unless you shroom up or go off the ramp, this one is unavoidable and can do some serious damage in the race. Another cool bomb spot is right after the first bounce. Back your bomb shortly after landing, and in most cases, your opponents will land right inside the radius with no way out. It can be a really good one, no doubt about that. And lastly, you can back a bomb right before the second super bounce, and this one will probably benefit you no matter what. Your opponents will either have to 
get hit, or in most cases, go around the tambourine. It can be pretty lethal, especially in a lap 3 situation. If the other team is in the front, but not too far in the front, this shock spot can do some serious damage. Can your shock into the last set? Of course, those in front of you will be itemless, but you might be able to target shock some people or force them to go around the tambourine. This is a great opportunity for you to gain a ton of spots, Bruh. and in a 66 situation, screwing over the other team at the end can help your team out a ton. It is very situational, but I feel like in most cases, chinning into the last set has the most benefits. Anyway, that's what you need to know about Music Park. So let's finish strong on Yoshi Valley. Yoshi Valley is a pretty strange track overall. Its evolution over the years is pretty interesting, but I don't know how to feel about this track. With that being said, I'd say this is a balanced track. You can beg and profit pretty hard here, but that's not to say you can't profit from running either. This is your stereotypical, if you're not sure, picket track. Well, at least it used to be, but in general, it really doesn't matter what spots you're in when picking this in 66, and of course, in Mogi as well. This is a track that you typically want to avoid picking, as it's one of, if not the most balanced track in the game. What I mean is that you probably have better options to benefit you or your team in particular. Regardless, Yoshi Valley is a balance track. Technically, there are four item sets here, but you really only have three. At the first set, you have six single boxes. Getting screwed over after the set usually doesn't mean much in the long run. You also have an item set on the cannon path, but this path is stupidly slow, and you should only be taking it if you're bagging. Besides, you probably already got three items from the first set at that point, so it really doesn't matter. At the real second set, you have four single boxes with a double box in the middle. This item set kind of sets the tone for the rest of the race in a lap three situation, but you won't be completely screwed over, by not getting your ideal items here, at least in most situations. And at the last set, you have three single boxes with two double boxes next to the very left and right box. I honestly think this is one of the most important item sets in the game because of the ending shortcut and the path you need to take to get to it, along with all the chaos that can unfold. In other words, make sure you get at least one item here. Getting two would be awesome, but in some scenarios, that can be too much to ask for. While you can use your golden later, I like using my golden after my super mini turbo runs out after the last set. It'll last until shortly after the finish line, which means it's fantastic in a lap 3 situation. My favorite! The Star Strike gets nerfed pretty hard if you don't have a speed item in your pocket, or aren't in a position to get a speed item or two, but if that doesn't apply to you, chain your start into the last set. It'll last just until the ending cut, which is where your speed item comes in. Altogether, this is a decent Star Strike that could help you out at any point in the race. And the Bill Strike is just okay, I suppose. Activate your bill on the left of the split path section before choosing a specific path. It'll drop you off right before the second set, so that counts for something, right? Two of these bomb spots are very similar, but you cannot avoid them. Back your bomb at the end of the first bridge. Unless your opponents take a different path, they have no chance of avoiding this beast. This bomb spot isn't too special, but it works. Back your bomb just before the turn before the last set. Again, not too special, but it could help you out. However, unless you have two bombs, you should hold your bomb until this bomb spot. Back your bomb pretty much anywhere on this bridge, and your opponents will have no chance at avoiding it without losing time. This bomb spot can be a game changer under the right circumstances, so take advantage of it. You have a ton of time between the last set and the finish line, so in most scenarios, this shock spot is deadly. Chin your shock into the final set. Your opponents will be forced to go around the ending shortcut while you can take full advantage of it. It's as simple as that. In a 66 situation though, this shock spot hits all kinds of different, and I highly suggest taking advantage of this one if it's feasible. It could literally flip the race, war, event, or whatever. But with that, we're finished with the strategies on the tracks in the Leaf Cup. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, stay tuned for next week when I go over the driving on the tracks in the Leaf Cup. We're almost finished with the retros, and we're getting close to finishing this series. I'm excited because my channel is going to go through quite the evolution when that time comes, so look forward to that. But until next time, thank you so much for watching, have yourselves a fantastic day, and keep on giving her, bud.